Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tim Wodinia and my presentation will be on what factors are important in influencing children to lead lives of crime. I have always wondered what factors contribute to and push children, adolescents, and young adults into leading lives of crime. It intrigues me as to why a child would want to throw away the opportunity to live a prosperous and wealthy life, to live a, a life where they are constantly in and out of prison. Is it because children who grow up in low-income households want to get rich quick by becoming criminals? Is it because they do not understand how valuable education is to their future? Is it because they get addicted to drugs or alcohol? Uh, maybe it's just because they didn't receive proper discipline from their parents? Or maybe teens are just very impressionable as we learn in this course and they think that life as a criminal is cool. I have seen um, uh, family members who have thrown it all away to adopt a life of crime. So I knew that multiple factors must be involved, but I really wanted to know which factor was the most influential or what combination of factors is the most influential. This is where my research and presentation was focused. According to uh, the National Center for Injury Prevention and Control in 2010, Juveniles, which include people under 18, of course, uh, make up 13.7% of people arrested for violent crimes, 22.5% of people arrested for property crime, 784 juveniles were arrested for murder, 2,198 were arrested for forcible rape, and 35,001 were arrested for aggravated assault, uh, according to FBI crime statistics for 2010. So my presentation... Um, I, when I began to think about this topic, I started to hypothesize about which factors can lead to or influence juveniles into leading lives of crime. In my research, I decided to uh, look at some more commonly researched topics, which include education, uh, drugs and alcohol, family income and socioeconomic status, and parenting. Uh, I believe that these are the most important and influential factors that can determine a child's future. Uh, yeah, I do understand that there are many more factors in this that can influence a child as they grow up. Um, education was the first contributing factor I looked into. Uh, in our society today, uh, if one doesn't have some kind of higher education or other experience in some kind of a trade, uh, it's nearly impossible for them to find a job. I know many of us have experienced this before uh, we pursued a higher education here at UNM. Uh, those who are unemployed tend to turn to, to uh, lives of crime to make money when they cannot find an honest job. Um, I wanted to know what either prevented or dissuaded juveniles from getting an education since our public schools are free and of course here in New Mexico we can even receive the lottery scholarship for a higher education degree. Um, also we now know from taking this course that education is monumentally, monumentally in, important for a child's future. Uh, one study I found interviewed criminals that committed serious offenses um, about their experience as a school and uh, their opinions towards school. Uh, they looked at the offender's transition to school, their school climate, academic success, peer relationships formed at school, and negative, uh, negative relationships toward or mistreatment by school officials. Uh, the study found that certain overall negative experiences in the previously mentioned areas made the subjects feel alienated from the school's education system. Uh, this then contributed to the students leaving the educational system uh, where they began their lives of crime. This study also found evidence that when students stay in school they have a much better chance of staying out of trouble since of course the majority of crime occur occurs outside of school. Um, therefore, it appears that making sure students have a positive experience while attending school is of the utmost importance. Uh, the next contributing factor I looked at was drugs and alcohol. I have always wondered how influential um, being addicted to drugs and alcohol can be in pushing juveniles into lives of crime. Uh, when someone is addicted to drugs, they tend to turn to crime so they can get large amounts of money in a short amount of time. They, the drive to obtain more and more drugs can push someone who is normally calm into becoming violent. Uh, also, even if the juvenile does not actually do drugs, they can discover how selling drugs can make them large amounts of money very fast. Uh, one study attempted to look at how alcohol abuse in juveniles affected their tendency to become delinquent. Uh, the study found evidence that early adolescents 
who abuse alcohol have a much higher tendency to develop delinquent behaviors during adolescence and also carry those behaviors into adulthood. Uh, another article suggested that juvenile drug use positively correlates with increases in crime. Youths who, both, youths who both use and sell drugs were the most likely group in the study to commit crimes against other people and property. Uh, the next contributing factor I looked into was family income and socioeconomic status. Uh, crime has always been correlated with uh, low-income regions or areas where poverty is present. Uh, this is because people who do not have enough money to support themselves or their family usually will turn to crime as a method to make money uh, fast and easy. Uh, the previously mentioned alcohol delinquency study also um, also mentioned that they found evidence supporting that adolescents who abused alcohol and lived in low-income areas were more delinquent or more involved in more delinquent behaviors than adolescents uh, who lived in higher income areas. It was said that the adolescents from the higher income areas said that they had more to lose from participating in delinquent behavior. Um, another recent study attempted to find a relationship between pop, prop, <laughs> property values and crime. Uh, it was thought that conditions like we are experiencing now in the recession uh, result in higher crime rates since more people are unemployed. Uh, there was not sufficient data for juveniles, but overall it was shown that arrests due to property and violent crimes did increase after the recession began. Uh, the last contributing factor I was able to look into was parenting. Uh, I believe that the way uh, a child is raised is possibly the most important determining factor for what path a child will follow when they grow up. Uh, good parents uh, play an extremely important role in teaching uh, children right from wrong, uh, morals, and just uh, general life skills. I believe that if a child does not have a positive upbringing, they will have a much less of a chance of becoming successful in life. Um, as we have learned in this course, of course, um, parenting is extremely important in determining a child's future. Uh, I found a few articles that focus on how parenting affected whether or not a juvenile becomes delinquent. The majority of those articles focused on how abortion was, uh, how after abortion was legalized, the overall crime rate seemed to drop. Um, one study by Donahue and Levitt even complained, claimed that legalized abortion accounted for as much as a 50% reduction in crime in the 90s, which was about 15 to 20 years after abortion was legalized. Uh, they also noticed that states who legalized abortion before the rest of the nation saw decreases in the crime rates earlier than the rest of the nation. Uh, after Roe versus Wade allowed for the legalization of abortion, around uh, 1.6 million abortions started to be performed every year, which was roughly uh, one for every two live births. They argued that other reasons for the drop in crime, such as decreases in drug use or better policing methods, were not the cause for the drop in crime because these changes were not r widespread across the nation like abortion was. Uh, another study by Hunt attempted to see if our teen pregnancy rates as a nation contribute to our high crime rate. The researcher noticed that uh, both our crime rates and teen pregnancy rates are higher than most modern countries around the world. Uh, the study concluded that children born to teen mothers contributed to the increase in crime uh, not because of their current poverty but because of conditions in their childhood. So the reasoning for behind both of these studies, which is supported in other literature, is that teen parents almost always do not possess maturity, resources, or ability to raise a child as successfully as parents who do possess these qualities. The abortion study suggested that m mothers who choose abortion generally do so because they are not in a stable position to have a child yet or care for them appro appropriately, possibly because they are too young, they do not want a child, or they don't have any financial means at the moment to take care of a child. Uh, when a child is born under circumstances like these, the child usually does not receive the proper parenting they require to become a successful and knowledgeable adult. Children born to parents who are immature or those who never wanted children in the first place tend to lack the discipline they require to keep them away from falling into uh, lives of crime. As for my conclusion, uh, I f what I found is there are so many different contributing factors that one could probably spend their entire life researching this topic. Uh, there are more topics that I wish I could have researched, but there, there was no way I had time for this presentation. 
Um, I also felt as though there is no concrete answer as to what factor is the most important or influential. Uh, I believe that there are just too many variables as to uh, that, that just can't be accounted for. Uh, there's no way to have a controlled child group and an experimental child group um, because not all the variables can be under the control of the researchers. Uh, I do believe that much more research should be conducted on this topic because helping parents to know the best methods for keeping their children from becoming criminals should be uh, of utmost importance to us. So that concludes my presentation and I am thank, thank you for listening.